everyone. Welcome to another edition of Sideline to Sideline on Giant TV Niagara. I'm Chuck LaFleur, along with, we're going to call him for this episode, Ravishing Ryan Fleming. And how apropos, I must say, uh, a, a proper moniker for one quite so ravishing like myself. <laughs> All right. You're looking, you're looking well. And it always seems fitting, though, uh, with, with our guest that I have a moniker like Ravishing when we have the beautiful one with us today. Yes, indeed. The Crossfire Wrestling Women's Champion, Beautiful Bia, joins us live at studio. Welcome to the show. Hello. How's it going? Great. Doing great. Uh, great to have you here with us, Bia. Um, you know, we, we, we go back a long time, so long time. Uh, this is going to be, you know, just like another conversation for you and I, um, but uh, we had to include Chuck in this conversation. <laughs> I'm sorry. I feel like a third wheel here all of a sudden. Yeah, you guys, you guys do have a history. There was just like some babysitting involved or something? Or? Right, right, right. Uh, Bia used to babysit me. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> that was just last week. Bia used to babysit uh, my, my children. Uh, oh, nice. Their formative years, so I blame her for everything. That's, uh, right so never, uh, we'll get to Bia in a sec, but what's Ryan Fleming really like oh he was awesome he's awesome i can't go okay where's him. the 20 bucks now? there you <laughs> go Pia, you are living the dream aren't you i am i love my life right now i have no complaints it's awesome uh, tell us a little bit about yourself um obviously uh, uh for those that don't know Pia, you are a professional wrestler uh, yes, and you've been I... doing this for what six years now? six years yes how did you get into the business um, watching Chris LaPlante and all those guys, Chuck the Butcher shows at the beach. I was there, a little fangirl, screaming, screaming, yeah. <laughs> so so you go from being a fan, and what's the first step then? Uh, did you know as, as a very young girl that you wanted to become a wrestler someday? No, I knew I loved screaming at the guys, and I really, like, enjoyed it. Like, being able to scream, shut up, and yell at Jay Moore, and it just, it hooked me. But I didn't think that I would actually become a wrestler. A few years later, I started managing. So I was, I was the Jay Moore. I was out there cheating for the guys, and wow, yeah, I cannot picture you ever. Not as, at all. Uh, as, as they say in the business, a heel. No, it was uh, very out manager. of. It was out of character for me. It was. <laughs> was it hard for you to to be that character, to be the heel, because you are such a natural. Uh, babyface or good guy character uh, for those that don't. Uh, yeah, don't it was know. very out of character. It, it didn't suit me at all. I would go do the high five and then take my hand away, and it was like more of a funny heel than right. mean. So to this day, do you still yell at Jay Moore when you have a chance to see oh, the infamous for one? Sure, yes. Oh, <laughs> it's easy, easy to do, isn't it? So, so um, you, tell us about your training. How did you uh, get into the business? Like, who was it that took you, took you under their wing? and taught you uh, the business? Well, I actually, I did high school wrestling as well. So I did that for four years. And then my mom was very, you have to finish college before you can go on to wrestling because she knew how much the schedule is right. busy and stuff. So after high school, I went to Chris Thorne at CWF and I started training there. And it took me about three years before I actually started wrestling. I started a manager. I was a ref. I was, I tried announcing. I was not very good. <laughs> And, yeah, I just did a little bit of everything, got a taste of everything. Do you remember your first Crossfire Wrestling match? Um, I remember the first three, because I wrestled in Welland, and then I wrestled Casey Spinelli and Caitlin Diamond. Those two matches wow. really stand out to so me. So right off the hop, but you are put in the ring with some very experienced, uh, very high-end talent. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Now, uh, we, we talk about that, um, and you're fighting a Caitlin Diamond and a Casey Spinelli, two former Crossfire Women's Champions. Um, two women that have fought across the globe. Yes. We're not talking just fought in Canada or in Ontario. They fought across they the globe. They are all over the place. Exactly. Even right now, I'm not even sure where they are, but they are not in Canada. They're, so. they're everywhere. <laughs> um, when, when you do that, what kind of pressure is that um, for someone who's brand new coming into the business and knowing who they are? There, there was a lot of pressure, especially people wanted me at Crossfire for so long, so that alone was pressure enough. They were ready to see me do my thing there and then for it to be Casey Spinelli and Caitlin the two top people it was it was there was a lot of pressure but around Ontario I've wrestled them before so it was just a, a little higher level right and tell us about the night you won the Crossfire Women's Championship then. oh man that was awesome I mean I felt like it was my destiny since like LaPlante booked me I was like all right that's what I'm going for Crossfire Women's title but the, w the way the crowd reacted, it was just awesome because it's all my hometown people and they really wanted it. Port and Coburn, Ontario's own. Now, we, we talk about, uh, or you, you, you touch on about uh, you being like a hometown favorite to uh, the fans when we're in Niagara. 
But when you fight, you fight all across Canada, PWA, CWF, and you are chanted and cheered for everywhere you go. Yeah. Now, one, how does a following like that happen um, on the indies where, where you're known everywhere you go and you already have that, uh, you know, that, that baby face uh, cheer from the crowd? And, and two, where do, where do you go from there? You know? Yeah, I don't know where it came from. I've been working at it for six years, obviously, and I have done my rounds, let's say, PWA, MCW. I've held, like, multiple championships, and I have I feel like when I go out there, I just bring energy. I dance, I, I stick my tongue out, I'm silly, and I think the crowd just wants to get in on that fun. So I have to ask you, Bea, uh, beautiful Bea from uh, Crossfire Wrestling, the current women's champ, uh, is our guest on this edition of Sideline to Sideline. I know our own Pat Porter, who makes appearances for Crossfire Wrestling in the ring, finally, finally, it's like the cover of the Rolling Stone to him, he finally got on a Crossfire Wrestling poster. What was your reaction <laughs> when you finally saw yourself on a wrestling poster after uh, oh, years of dreaming? Oh, if you follow me on social media, I was taking selfies with every poster that I've seen around town. <laughs> it was awesome. You are one of the queens of social media, though, when it comes to it. Um, do you feel when it comes to social media um, especially in this day and age it's such an important part for building your character do you find that that's been a, a big influence as well for building your fan base probably I never really thought of it that way but I am always posting about my life trying to show how much fun I'm having and yeah right. I never really thought about it that way but well, I do. I bring these thoughts <laughs> to people. <laughs> we go deep here inside. Side Absolutely. Line. That's what it's all about, B, as you can tell. Uh, we've got a big show coming up on April the 28th. It's Mayhem. Uh, your <laughs> opponent coming up at this show. Uh, you faced her at uh, the last Crossfire Wrestling Show March Meltdown. And, uh, boy, she is... Uh, Holly Dead first is her name. Uh, are, are you intimidated by her? She she is a little bit on the scary side. Yes, yeah, she she's different for sure, and she's arguably one of the toughest opponents I've had at Crossfire. I think that match was insane. Being in there, just it felt like it was never going to end. I was hitting her with everything I had. Had her in that submission, I really thought it was over. And when the bell rang, I just yeah, you guys surreal. you guys went uh, went the time limit. Yeah. There. there was a, a no decision there. So it is the, it's actually a vacated uh, championship right now. And you and Holiday are going for that vacated championship yes. at Mayhem. And this this is going to be a defining moment, I think, uh, for both you and Holiday. Like you two are putting women's wrestling in Crossfire on the map. Yet again, which Crossfire's always had great women's wrestling, but now it's uh we're taking it up a notch. Yeah, here, so. we're le leveling up for sure. I'm yeah. I'm a little bit nervous, but I think nerves are good. I really I believe nerves are good. If you don't, I heard someone say if you don't have nerves, you should just get out now. Yeah. So, now I, I I my apologies too. I, I think I jumped the gun. I know it's going to happen on yeah. the 28th. I mentioned uh, Bia was the uh, beautiful Bia was the current Crossfire Wrestling right. champ. It's a formality, I think. <laughs> yeah. At this point, Holiday, if you're watching, take yes. that. All right. What yeah. do you do before a match? Any superstitions? Any rituals you go to before you uh, get into the uh, into the ring on uh, the the day? of an event well i definitely like to talk to the fans they help me get ready like they pump me up they tell me like you got this so i definitely like to get out there and chat them up and get know that they're they're rooting for me that's big for me now uh talking about the fans uh the, you're a fan yourself you talked about that already um i would have to think of one of the best moments for you so far in your career has been your three stints that you've done as an extra with the WWE. Can you tell us a little bit about that and what you did there? Those experiences were awesome. I started, I think when I was 22, I got the first call and I was a rosebud. And that was awesome. It's a cool experience. The atmosphere is cool. I'm just sitting there watching everyone do their thing. And it's, it's really surreal. And then last year I was at SummerSlam with Noe Jose. I was at the front of that Congo line shaking those maracas. It was, it's awesome. It's, yeah, nice. it's, it's surreal because these are all the guys I look up to and I'm sitting in the same room eating the awesome catering with them. And it's hey, just... Sitting across from Ronda Rousey. Exactly, yeah. I actually made a joke with her because we were filming a promo and uh, the camera 
had to be downstairs in like 10 seconds or something and the elevator wasn't up and she was like okay let's just run it down there and it was it was really cool all right <laughs> if we get a couple of quick predictions off you while we have your uh, beautiful via from uh, for mayhem cody deaner versus phil atlas oh i'm a cody deaner fan cody deaner all the way mm-hmm. uh, just like impact? yeah, yeah with the, the deaners uh ben Habin, ben Hameen and uh, congo kong who are uh, ryan's the monsters. yeah 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 taking on the beaters what do you think oh Moore's Monsters. I love the Piss Beaters, but they Ben Hamin's last match against uh, Joe Pimento was like insane. So mm-hmm. I'm gonna have to gonna have to go with He's Moore's gonna, Monsters. There I guess. you go. See, there you go. And, <laughs> and Joe's gonna be actually the special guest referee I hear for uh, Cody Deaner so and for Phil some, Atlas. That could have an effect on that match. Fixed, fixed. I'm just saying, Laplante is at it again. And speak, we'll wrap this up with uh, Chris Laplante and uh, what he's meant to uh, your career and uh, being a, a hometown guy as well. Chris Laplante is an awesome guy. He has been by my side every step of the way in the background or when I was sitting there watching him. It was really surreal to finally get to work for him, really. Awesome. He's a, cool. awesome. pretty awesome. Uh, my last question, I guess, for you uh, that I have, uh, and I ask every wrestler we ever talk to about this. What is your dream match? Could be uh, former, past, deceased, alive. What What is your dream match? Hmm, that's a really tough question. I guess Trish Stratus. Like nice. that is it. I've I've always looked up to her and. A little satisfaction. Yeah. Absolutely. Hey, what about, I know that's your dream match against Trish Stratus, but I was just dreaming about what about beautiful Bia maybe, I don't know, uh, doing a move on our co-host Ryan Fleming. It's become a tradition here on Sideline to Sideline. Yep, for I've seen some clips. Oh, yeah? <laughs> We, we, we don't have room in the studio for this fro- uh, the frog splash. Right, right. We don't have a ring for her to jump off the top rope onto me. Do we need a ring? <laughs> maybe the table. I don't know if it's high enough. <laughs> so, so maybe we'll just stick. Uh, we, we'll, we'll, we'll avoid the wheel kick. No, the spin right. wheel kick, and maybe just stick with a, a beautiful via chop. Okay. These little hands can do some damage. I know what I'm <laughs> this I gotta see on sideline to sideline. All right, Ryan Fleming here, Giant TV, and I am here with the beautiful Bia. We sat down with a nice conversation, uh, talking about your career and about your upcoming match at Crossfire, uh, Mayhem Against Hall of Dead. And now we have to come to some business that we do all the time here, and uh, when we have wrestlers or combat sports on here, they always have to leave me with something, and it's your turn to leave me with... Uh, a little bit of a, uh, a memento, we'll say. All right, I'm going to shoot for not as hard as just insane, but I'm going to hit harder than Hacker, for sure. Okay, you, you give it what you got. All right. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> you all right over well, there? That was great. Thanks, Chuck. Well, Did thanks, Bia. <laughs> no, that was, that was good. Thank you, Bia. Um, for Sideline to Sideline with beautiful Bia, all right, well, it's been another edition. Thanks. <laughs>